don't ever laugh as a hearse goes by for you may be the next to die they wrap you up in bloody sheets and drop you six feet underneath they put you in a pine wood box and cover you up with dirt and rocks it all goes well for about a week and then your coffin begins to leak and the worms call in and the worms call out the worms play pinochle on your snout they eat your eyes they eat your nose and then you begin to decompose a slimy beetle with demon's eyes cleans to your stomach and out your side your stomach turns into rancid grease and pus pours out like melt to cheese you spread it on a slice of bread and that's what you eat when you're dead the worms call out and the worms call in the worms that call in are lean and thin the ones that call out are fat and stout your eyes fall in and your hair falls out your brain turns into maggot pie your liver starts to liquefy and as for the living all is well as you sink further into hell and the flames rise up and drag you down into the fire where you will drown your skin melts off as you descend and satan tears your limb from limb your suffering will never end and the worms call in and the worms call out they'll eat your guts and spit them out and when your bones begin to rot the worms remain but you do not so don't ever laugh as a hearse goes by for someday you'll be the one to die and when death brings his cold despair ask yourself does anyone care The White Lady of Smock Alley. Long ago, on the site of Smock Alley, there stood another theatre called the Theatre Royal, which was for a time one of the great venues of Dublin City. Like many theatres during that time, there were private boxes close to the stage for wealthy aristocrats, and many of those were young men who would go to great lengths to meet the actresses after their performances. Around that time, there was an actress called Peg Flaherty, a raven-haired beauty with large dark eyes who dressed always in white. The White Lady, as she was known, had the charms of a sorceress who could cast spells with her voice and make wealthy men fall in love with her. One of the men who became smitten was a young aristocrat called Charles Fitzroy, the son of the Earl of Middlesex. This young man took the same box every night and did not lift his eyes from the white lady, sending flowers to her dressing room along with bad poetry and special pleadings to meet her. The white lady resisted these advances for some time, but one evening she bid him enter and one glance was all it took for her to fall in love with the aristocrat. Young Charles returned to the same box every night and watched his love. While on the stage, Peg would send him secret glances. But their love was doomed from the start, for the white lady was the daughter of a bricklayer, and Charles was promised to the hand of a young lady. No matter how much he tried to persuade the earl, the old man would not let him sever the marriage agreement. Young Charles and Peg Flaherty met for the last time in her dressing room, where they held each other and kissed and cried, for the next day Charles was to be married. He travelled on his honeymoon to Italy and onwards to Lake Garda, where he was drowned with his young wife in a boating accident. When the news reached Dublin, the white lady was pitched into grief and lost the power of speech. For months, the white lady stayed away from the stage, but the city cried out for her. 
Letters were written and the Lord Mayor of Dublin pleaded with her. And so it came the night when she vowed to return. The Theatre Royal in those days was a place of great atmosphere. For in that time before electricity, the hall was lit by tallow candles, which made the theatre dim and smoky. That evening, as Peg stood on the stage, she looked towards the box that young Charles had kept, and what she saw made her blood run cold. In that box was a young man watching down with the same pale face and fine features as young Charles. The white lady let loose a scream and fled, running out onto Wellington Quay, where, in a moment of blind terror, she fell under the hooves of a team of rushing horses. What Peg Flaherty could not have known was that the young man in the box was Charles's younger brother, Henry, two boys who looked so very similar. But because of the secrecy of her love with Charles, she was never permitted to meet him. From that day on, it has been said that the white lady has returned to haunt Smock Alley, with many attesting to having seen her. An inexplicable glimmer of white in the darkness passing behind the stage. A quick flash of light that is said to be the white lady reliving again and again in eternal torment her last moment of horror as she fled from the stage. Spell on you. Because you're mine. Stop the things you do. Oh, <laughs> 